Rigging, bone alignment, weight painting. If any of these words give you an instant headache or make you want to punch out the drywall in your bedroom, you've come to the right place. Today we'll be animating the Serene Koi Pond and Blender using only modifiers and constraints. Absolutely no rigging involved, so unball your fists, put down the ibuprofen, and let's animate something without the encumbrance of armatures. My name is Elijah Sheffield, I go by Sweet Boy Motion in professional settings. I'm an animator, illustrator, and certified scuba diver. Today, the wonderful folks at School of Motion are letting me talk to you about the exciting topic of modifier-driven animation within Blender. In this tutorial, we'll be rigging up this adorable little fish with some modifiers, and then we'll teach him to swim. We'll make a kind of murky water shader that'll blow your socks off. And finally, we'll make some lily pads that bob in a really relaxing, random pattern. If you've not done so already, go ahead and download the project files provided in the description of this video so that you can follow along. But if you've got your own fish that you're ready to rig, that's totally fine too. Now, there are a few things to set up before we start animating, so let's pop into Blender and take a look. Let's start with our render settings. We'll make sure our renderer is cycles using GPU and change the sample rates. We'll set the viewport samples to 16 to make sure it's not bogging us down while we're previewing, and we'll set the render to 128. High enough for a good render, but not so high that it takes forever. With our render settings locked in, let's take a moment to look at our screen setup. Now, this part isn't necessary, but it just makes life a little bit easier. We'll move our cursor to the corner until we get a crosshair, and then we'll drag out our screens until it's split into four viewports. Now we're going to make the windows useful. We'll change the top right window to a shader editor. That'll be for later. Smack the N key to collapse the tool settings and give us a little bit more screen real estate. We'll keep the bottom right as a viewport window, but change our view to the camera by hitting this little camera icon on the right. And holding Z, we'll enter into render preview. Now let's change the smaller window to the graph editor, which we'll use for animation later on. And for the final thing we change, let's make sure our frame rate is 24 FPS and set our frame range from 24 to 120. That gives us five seconds to operate in, but feel free to extend it if need be. Alrighty, the basics are covered, and now it's time to teach fish how to swim. With the fish layer turned on, let's hit the command A combo and add a plane to our scene. Before we do anything else, double click the name in the outliner and rename it to something easily recognizable like fish deformer plane. We'll rotate the plane 90 degrees in the Y axis by hitting R and then Y and then typing 90. Hold Option or Alt as you orbit the object to take an orthographic side view. Use G and S to move and scale the object until it roughly matches the size of the fish. When it looks perfect, slam Shift A on the keyboard and apply the scale. Tab into edit mode and let's add some more geometry. We'll hit command R to add a loop cut. And using the tool settings window, we'll increase the amount to something like 12. Now we'll tab back out of edit mode and navigate to the modifier window. It'll be a little blue wrench, you can't miss it. Click add modifier and search for the wave deformer. Now we're gonna adjust the following settings. Turn off motion in the X axis. We'll set the height to something around two, the width to about 12, and the narrowness to 0.17. And finally, twirl down the time tab and change the speed to 0.27. Feel free to play around with these settings to achieve your own desired look, but I just found for our purposes today, these settings kind of work the best. For the time being, click this little screen icon on the modifier to disable it. This will allow us to set things up without the modifier interfering. Now we'll turn our focus to the fish body. Select the body geo and add a surface deform modifier. We'll select our plane as its target. We'll then click bind and rinse and repeat for all the rest of the fish parts. Once all the fish parts are bound to the plane through our modifiers, we can toggle the wave modifier on the plane back on and hit play. Looky there, he's swimming. Now let's just make sure the plane doesn't show up and bother us anymore. Under restriction toggles, make sure you have disable and render. Click it. This guarantees we can still use it for deformation, but it won't appear in our renders. Now the fish needs to move across the screen, so let's give him some help. With shift A, create an empty. This will be our controller for the little guy. With the empty selected, hit the A key, which will select everything. Command P will parent all those objects to the empty. So now we can move all the fish parts from a single axis. Using shift A yet again, add a bezier curve. Tab into edit mode, hit 1 to use point selection mode, hit A to select all points, and X to delete all points. Now we'll draw our own shape. Select the Bezier pen tool and draw a spline shape that feels fishy to you. You can use G, R, and S to move, rotate, and scale points until the path shape is up to your standards. Tab back into object mode and we'll rig him up. Now we'll select our empty again. Remember, he's the controller for the whole fish. Navigate yourself to the constraints tab and add a follow path constraint. We'll select our Bezier path as our target and set the offset to negative 100 so the fish starts at the top of our curve. At the head of your timeline, frame 24, set a keyframe for your offset. This will be the fish's starting position. Scrub to the last frame of the timeline and change the offset to zero, setting a keyframe as you do. With your cursor hovering over the timeline, hit A to select both keyframes and then T to bring up an interpolation menu. Set the type to linear, that way the keyframes between the two have a consistent progression. As we play it back, you'll notice that it sucks and looks nothing like how a fish swims. So let's fix that. Toggle the little checkbox, follow curve, allowing it to align the rotation to the direction of the curve. And just take a moment to appreciate how easy that solve is. The solutions are so rarely this easy. Now, as an experienced fisherman, I've noticed that fish are really bad at swimming outside of water. So the next logical step is giving him a pond to swim in. 
Turn on your pond floor collection and let's build him a pond. The first step is easy. Let's make a cube with shift A and then make it great big. We'll scale it in the X and Y axis until it's large enough to cover the pond floor and tall enough to cover our fish. For the sake of ease, navigate to the object's property panel, twirl down the viewport display settings and change the display as type to wireframe. That will help us see what's going on in our scene, even in solid mode. Now we'll be spending some time in our shader editor. With the cube selected, click on new in the editor window. Go ahead and rename it water shader. Before we get too in the weeds, make sure you have the add-on node wrangler enabled. Back in the shader editor, let's hold command and right click and drag to sever the connection here. We'll add two elements to build the base of our shader. We'll add a mixed shader node between our principled BSDF and the output. And then we'll add a glass BSDF as well. Make sure both are plugged into the mix shader and holding control and shift, we'll click the mix shader node, routing it to the output node. Let's make some adjustments. First in the mix node, let's set the factor to 0.3 so it favors the glass. Next, we'll change the color of the principal BSDF to black. Now to get some ripples going for the water, we'll set up a system for a bump. Let's start with a color ramp. We'll create a noise texture to run into the ramp before bringing up the blacks. We can preview what's happening by holding Control and Shift and clicking the color ramp node. Let's also go ahead and change the noise dimensions to 4D. This will give us a property to animate to make the water appear like it's moving. While we're at it, let's change the scale to 8, making the texture a little bit smaller. Create a bump node and route the color ramp through the height and plug that into the normal input. We can control shift our mix shader node and see how our shader's cooking. It's looking a little dark and kind of bland, so let's work on it a little bit more. We'll need three new ingredients, another mix shader node, a transparent node, and a light path node. Hook up the current mix shader node into the new one, along with the transparent BSDF. We'll use the shadow ray output as the factor and hook all of that back up to the output with control shift click. So essentially what we've done is lay a base for reflection and refraction. When we animate the waves, we'll get some kind of cool subtleties to the tops of the waves, and we'll also get some nice refraction on the fish as the waves move around and the fish swim through. But the real magic of the shader comes out in the volume. So let's take a look at that. First, we'll need an add shader node, an emission node, and a volume absorption node. Mix the emission and absorption into an add shader, and route all of that back to the volume input of the material output. Let's change the color of the emission to a dark green, and then we'll change the strength to something lower like 0.3. We'll also change the density of the absorption node to something like 0.25, giving us the beginnings of a murky water look. Okay, now for step two, we need to create a map for the color of the absorption node so that the water seems denser at the bottom, but clearer at the top. So let's add two color ramps. For the first one, we'll hook up a gradient node to it. With the gradient node selected, punch Control T to attach some mapping nodes and rotate the Y 90 degrees. In the color ramp, bump the blacks and push the value to maybe a middle gray. And now for the second color ramp, we're gonna change the black value to a deep blue, and the white value to a seafoam green. Plug the black and white color ramp into the colorful one, and then plug the colorful one into the absorption color input. The gradient ramp is running the density up from the bottom. With this in mind, go ahead and play around with it until you get the right look. The final piece of the water shader puzzle is the animation. It's super simple. On frame 24, we'll need to actually set a keyframe on the W property of the noise texture. This value controls the fourth dimension of the noise, allowing us to animate its position. So to do this, we'll hover over the W and hit I on the keyboard to add a keyframe. Go forward to frame 120 and change the value to 0.1. Set the interpolation to linear, and now our water is moving. If you're not getting a reflection from the sun, you can always rotate it around until you get something that hits on the water. Ponds love fish, and fish love lily pads. So all you have to do is turn on the lily pad collection, turn everything else off, and I'll show you how to animate it. First off, let's select the lily pad itself. In the transformation window, insert a single keyframe on the Z axis. Now we'll head to the graph editor and add an animation modifier, noise. The noise modifier allows you to randomize the value selected, giving you a similar effect to wiggle in After Effects. We'll adjust some values to make it feel more tranquil and a little less crazy. The scale should be pumped to 15 and the strength should be choked back to 0.5. Now, if we play it back, it has a nice subtle bobbing motion that feels random. It took us all of 10 seconds to make. How nifty is that? Now we gotta connect the stem using a tool called the hook. It's a really awesome feature that allows you to parent individual vertices to an empty. Select the stem and tab into edit mode. Holding Z, change the view mode to wireframe and grab the top few vertices. Now with all the strength that you can muster, pound control H and blam, a hook appears. We now have an object that controls all the verts we just selected. This hook can be translated, animated, and most importantly, parented to other objects and inherit their animated properties. So let's do that. Now we'll tab back into object mode, grab that hook, and parent it to the lily pad with command P. Now as the pad bobs up and down, it keeps the top of the stem on it. Well, my friends, we've completed all the pieces, so now it's in your hand to combine it all into a symphony of fish-oriented tranquility. Now I love seeing the implementation of these tutorials, so if you do try any of this out, be sure to upload it to Instagram and tag myself, Sweetboy Motion, and School of Motion so that we can print it out and hang it on our respective refrigerators. 
If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out schoolofmotion.com where you can learn animation, design, illustration, all kinds of stuff like that, and really in-depth courses with an amazing community of students, teachers, and alumni. And if you're not already subscribed to School of Motion, what are you doing? Subscribe, the button's right there. Thanks for watching.